Well, folks, generally I consider armed fighting techniques from historical manuals to be pretty straightforward, down-to-earth, practical. I mean, they had to be. At the time, people were relying on these techniques to keep them alive. And uh, what didn't work could literally die out just because whoever tried it just, well, didn't live to tell the tale. And in fencing manuals from the Middle Ages and Renaissance, you can see that for the most part. The techniques predominantly are pretty direct and effective. But I've now found something that is just really, really bizarre and I cannot see any practical merit to that whatsoever. So what I found is from the Gladiatoria series of manuscripts, which were written around the 1430s, and uh, I'm referring specifically to MSKK 5013, which is now in possession of a museum in Vienna. So this manuscript deals with armored fighting, specifically in the context of a judicial duel, where both opponents would be equipped with a dagger, longsword, buckler, and spear. And it's a spear play number 12, where the translated text is as follows. If you want to end him rightly, in other words, if you want to fuck him up real good, hold your spear and sword together on your arm, unscrew the pommel of your sword, and throw it at him vigorously. Close in with the throw and use your sword or spear, whatever suits you best. So now I'm assuming you're just sitting there and going, wait, what? <laughs> it's uh, certainly unorthodox to say the least. And it's also interesting for another reason, namely it would be a pretty early indication of threaded pommels. Uh, so far I've only seen evidence of swords with threaded pommel from the 17th century. But uh, 15th century, that would be significantly earlier. Um, you can, of course, debate it, uh, how plausible that really is. I'm not aware of any actual archaeological sword find from the 15th century that has a threaded pommel. But uh, then again, I haven't looked through all of the finds, obviously. Um, would be rare. I mean, at the time and before that, peened construction was definitely predominant. But... Um, yeah, apparently it did exist. I mean, even if you look at the image, you can actually see the thread. The artist actually depicted that. It's pretty obvious that it's supposed to be one. And also you can tell by the text, it's, he kind of describes it in, in a sort of self-evident way. Well, you just unscrew it and throw it at him. He doesn't go into, oh, if you have this particular strange unique kind of sword or whatever it seems pretty normal to the author and also he tells you what to do in case your opponent tries that he starts out with when he throws his pommel at you da, da, da. so that kind of suggests that it wouldn't be unheard of that the opponent would try that possibly which to me is, is utterly absurd i mean okay let's see first of all i don't have too many swords with threaded pommel I basically just have this practice sword here, synthetic, and then I have my <laughs> um, monster here. Well, let's just go with this because it's fun. So uh, I can see the general tactic of trying to surprise your opponent, or distract them, throw something at them so they go, oh, what the hell, and then you rush in and, and try to attack. I can get that, but in order for that to work, it has to be, well, surprising and it has to be quick. But uh, if I go, ha ha, just give me a moment here. I'm working as quickly as I can here. Just hold still for a little longer. Come on now. I'll be with you any moment. Ha ha. Mm, yeah. And keep in mind you're dealing with a lot of equipment here. Spear, buckler, longsword. And uh, he basically suggests to drop the buckler, have the longsword in your left hand, take the spear, put that in your, under your arm, and then frantically start screwing away at the pommel, <laughs> which <laughs> I'm already going as fast as I can here. There, throw the thing and then rush in. That's just bizarre. I, I can't put it any other way. I mean, what What are you doing? It's just, I really don't know what the point of that is. Your opponent will clearly see you're screwing away at the thing. So there's obviously something coming. Or rather, I mean, if you see them frantically screwing away at the pommel, that's basically your chance to attack. So it's kind of, 
I don't know. And it's going to take a while because the thread, of course, needs to be long enough to um, hold the pommel securely. And also, both combatants are shown in full steel plate armor with the visor down. So even if your opponent does throw their pommel at you, why should you even care? You have the visor down, you can basically just stand there and, and let it bounce off your armor and be like, are you serious? <laughs> and then afterwards you're supposed to still use the sword, or the spear alternatively, which suggests that the, the guard is secured independently. So they probably made it with a tight enough slot that they could hammer it on there and it was pretty secure, so that even when the, the pommel was not on there, um, it wasn't a problem. So obviously that kind of construction construction cannot have relied on just the compression of the grip alone but uh it's extremely <laughs> mind-boggling i i don't know how that's supposed to work and yeah a judicial duel is a somewhat different context and there were some rules but at the same time you were still expected to either make your opponent yield or kill them this was not a joke they were not playing around this was not just for show if it had been you know, just uh, show fighting, just just you know to entertain the masses, then I could see something or, or unorthodox like this, you know, coming into play. But this was serious business. You wanted to do everything you could in order to win, because if you don't, then well, at best you're gonna be found guilty. At worst, you're gonna be dead. So <laughs> there's really no room for fooling around. So that's what confuses me about this. It just doesn't seem to make any sense. Maybe I'm overlooking something, but uh, I really can't imagine. But uh, most of the other techniques in Gladiatoria definitely make a lot more sense, so it's still worth looking into. It's just this one is baffling. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching.